Welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome, food travelers. I'm Micah. And I'm Simon. We are back in Las Vegas, and tonight we're headed to Bellagio Buffet for dinner. I believe the last time we came here, it was only for lunch. Yeah, Micah, this was really exciting because after we found out that they were opening back up for the dinner buffet, we knew we just had to come over and try this because, you know, it's the offerings have been... I want to say kind of limited in terms of all the buffets in Vegas and on the Strip. And so kind of when they opened everything new, it was nice that uh, that once we heard the news that we booked our flight and we headed over to go give it a try. So I know some of you may be asking in the comment, how much is, is it per person? So at the time of this recording, it was $59.99 a person uh, before tax and tip. And the day that we went here was a Thursday night. And also something to note that on weekends, um, it is a little bit more. I believe there is an increase of about $5 for the dinner price and about $8 for the lunch. Um, don't quote, on, quote me on that exactly, but um, there is an increase in price for, for the weekend days. Yeah, so definitely check out the website, uh, which will be on the description box. So uh, make sure you check those prices before you're showing up or, or you'll be... Really surprised with the huge increase if they do increase anymore. And one of the things I was actually excited or, or hoping to see was kind of a, an expansion of the seafood. Um, I've got to say overall I was actually kind of disappointed because, um, you know, again with, with the image that comes with Bellagio itself and all the things that uh, you kind of imagine with the quality and and prestige of Bellagio you you kind of you know it, it's a top tier casino and you would think that they would give you pretty much all those things that other casinos would do as a top tier casino and so I was thinking that the seafood would have been expanded much much more than it was um, especially with uh, crab legs but I don't know about you Micah but I did not see any crab legs whatsoever when we were there yeah yeah I, I totally agree with Simon there I, I actually did expect to see uh, some crab legs but I was so surprised when we got here for dinner buffet and uh, and the increase in price too from lunch is, is quite a bit too and in, in terms of offering there was no crab legs but they did have oysters I mean that is definitely a change from from lunch and also uh, we did come here really early uh, I believe we got here 15 minutes before they started opening and there was already a pretty long line. Yeah, uh, it really did look like there was quite a bit of people who were excited to come try this as well. And uh, kind of going back to the seafood, um, I, I did notice one of the stations that when we went previously during the lunch in, in our earlier episode, and you can find that in the description box for that, for that link. Um, one of the uh, stations, they actually changed uh, quite a bit. It used to be a, a kind of mixed dessert and kind of miscellaneous items and that changed over into a uh, kind of more of a sushi bar type of uh, station and you'll see it through the walkthrough um, and so that was different which, which which was nice but like I said before you know I was really excited to to pay that increased price you would kind of think that you'd have all those different crab legs or something else to kind of dig into and kind of get their uh, you know, their version, Bellagio's version of that, but since they didn't have it, yeah, that was something that just kind of stuck in my head and stayed on my mind and kind of made me a little disappointed. Yeah, so echoing on Simon on that, that center station that we're uh, looking at here right now with all the pokes and sushi rolls. So those are kind of like the newer uh, their added items for dinner. Um, so for the lunch buffet in this whole section, it's mostly just bread and cereal and I think yogurt and some other stuff that are breakfast related but for dinner yeah like talk like Simon said definitely would have expected more uh, seafood so hopefully uh, they do add that in the future yeah I, I agree um, hopefully they do they kind of expanded and you know I, I kind of give them a pass in a sense that you know I, I know getting 
you know, ingredients or supplies or things like that. It's not as easy. And so, you know, as they kind of, uh, kind of start going back to opening pretty much all, you know, their operations to, to full speed, it, it can't be that easy to get everything that you want or need right away since supplies are, are pretty tough to get, um, at the moment. So in that sense, you know, I'll kind of give them a pass and, and B, it's okay, but you know, still I gotta echo that I, I was disappointed. Yeah, I think some of the other uh, newer items in, in this uh, buffet might be that brisket too. I, I don't remember seeing that last time uh, we were here for lunch. Yeah, I did not try the brisket, um, but there were definitely a few new items. Um, I also had uh, um, some, I believe it was veal, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, Unfortunately for that piece, I, I took the bite and it wasn't great, which was kind of surprising. It was it was dry. Um, you'll see it in our uh, walk through the plates that we grabbed. Um, it comes in its own little tin, uh, 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 tin bowl, and it. Uh, I kind of took a bite and it was dry, so I did not finish that. I, I wish the, the flavoring was okay, but with the dryness, it just kind of. Uh, it made it difficult to eat. So I did not try that uh, tin uh, veal thing that Simon had. Uh, I had other stuff. Um, I still think the prime rib is really, really good. They always season it really well, and it's got a really nice crust. And overall, I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, it's also interesting, every time we come here, or part each particular buffet, we always sit on the right side of every single buffet. Yeah, it seems to be a trend that every time we go through, we, we're always at least from the, the entrance of the buffet itself, we are always heading to the right side. Um, I don't know, hopefully the right side is just a better side to film, which helps us, but I have no idea if that is true or not. But uh, but as you can kind of see through our plate walkthroughs, you know, there is a good selection of variety. So that is something that it's, it's also uh, something to consider with these larger strip buffets. Um, you know, it can be disappointing, especially if you go to one of these strip buffets and they don't have much uh, different foods to choose from. Um, but in this case, you know, they do have the, the meats, the, the seafoods, minus the crab legs, of course, and then uh, you know, all the other items in between. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to really try those oysters, um, but they, they, don't, they didn't taste as uh, fresh as I think they should have tasted. Um, but then it's also a buffet too, so maybe that's why it's not uh, up to my standards on, on those. But in terms of like the choice, they had a lot of shrimp uh, dishes. I think like three different type of shrimp dishes and I had all three. I, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, I'm still missing, I'm still kind of salty and missing that, that crab. <laughs> yeah, it's the, uh, they also had a baked oyster with um, some breadcrumbs and a, and a little bit of cheese and a variety of different uh, herbs and spices on top. And I tried that and it seemed to me, it was kind of the best I could describe it would be something that was kind of set out for a while, which kind of sucked. And so when I, I took a bite of that and, and it stuck onto the shell pretty well. And so it was kind of difficult to kind of pull it out. You really have to tear it up and to, to get the, uh, the oyster out. And it just wasn't quite there. Um, one of the other items that I did really enjoy was the actual corn, um, the Mexican corn. That was pretty good. It was nice and sweet. Um, sometimes corn, if it's kind of, I don't say overcooked, but uh, when, when, you, when you leave it um, a little bit too long as you're cooking, it can get that soggy feeling. And so, you know, it's not quite the same. You don't have that burst when you bite in. But in this case, it was it was pretty good. It was not ideally cooked to the to the best it could be but it was pretty good and the flavors were awesome so i really did enjoy that so how do you think of the corn uh, in comparison to a uh, bacchanal um if you've seen our bacchanal episode you'll see that they used to have a kind of a grill section where they would pretty much cook all the uh corn um i think in that case because it's cooked fresh and right there you kind of get the the best that you can get because you're literally there watching them cook it and it goes through quickly and there's a lot of people so the, uh, the inventory goes out really quick and so they're always having to produce new ones. Um, so in terms of freshness I would say Bachnell has the upper hand 
But in terms of flavor, I actually enjoy the flavor here at Bellagio much more. Oh, that's, that's good to know. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to watch more of that Bacchanel review, uh, visit down the link in the uh, description down below. And then moving on here into the dessert section and the dessert walkthrough, um, I think one of the newer sections that I've noticed is the mock runes and also the crepe station. Uh, I believe last time we came here, they did not have either of those, and it was much, much less in terms of uh, dessert uh, choices. Yeah, they definitely looked like they expanded on their desserts. Um, I was, I was too full to try any desserts. I was contemplating whether I should go grab some, and I really did want to, but um, like Mike mentioned earlier, the prime rib was actually really good, so I went for seconds for the prime rib, and I think that seconds actually just filled up the rest of the space I had left. And so when I was thinking about grabbing dessert, I couldn't. So in terms of uh, how good the desserts that were tried, you'll have to, Michael, you'll have to be the one to uh, inform everybody. Yeah, so every time I come to a buffet, I, I always try to make space for uh, dessert. So this time I did not get any uh, ice cream or gelato here. Um, I actually went for the crepe station and also the macaroons since those are the newer items that I saw. Um, I also got this cheesecake and this uh, cream orange creamsicle thing and like a creme brulee. Um, those other items, like the creamsicle thing, didn't taste like anything like cream. But the macaroons were really, really good. The shell of the macaroons were really good. Uh, it was like a crispy shell, um, and it was like kind of melt in your mouth type of center. So I thought uh, those were done really well. The creme brulee here, as you can see, I'm trying to like poke it or crack the shell of the sugaring on the top coat, and I thought that was pretty good too. It was not too thick. Um, I think in terms of texture, it, it, it's where it should be. Uh, in terms of the crepe station, uh, they didn't exactly make me one fresh from, from a scratch, which I was kind of disappointed in. They actually had one that, that was pre-made and they just put the toppings on it. So it was not exactly hot when I got mine. So I think that could have been a factor why it didn't taste as great as it should be. Um, but I would definitely try those again. Overall, I think the price is a little bit steep, I think, in my opinion, for kind of what you get. Um, I'd, I'd rather go do Wicked Spoon Buffet uh, because I think kind of with the price you're paying and the, the food that you do get with that, um, I think that's a little bit better. But overall, it's not bad, but also not great. So I'm kind of in the middle here. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Simon. Uh... I think in terms of the pricing for dinner, uh, you're not getting that much more than lunch for Bellagio. So if you do like crab legs, like we've been mentioning the whole time here, definitely uh, visit Wicked Spoon. And if you want more, then go uh, Bacchanel. And to wrap up the episode is our notables. And for this first notables was the prime rib. And the prime rib, it was just seasoned really well. The outer crust was very, very nice and flavorful. Um, one of the things that we really enjoyed was the juiciness of the prime rib. It was actually really, really well done that I actually went and had seconds because it tasted so well. So definitely something to pick up if you're a prime rib lover. And for this uh, second notable is the coffee macaroon. I think the macaroon was really good. It was very consistent in terms of taste. And the shell for every single macaroon I had in this buffet was very consistent in terms of how they make the shell. It's really, really crispy. So overall, I think this was a really good addition to the dinner buffet. Definitely uh, worth a try. If you've enjoyed the content you've seen, don't forget to support the channel and hit like and subscribe. And if you want to see additional pictures of food and our travels, go over to our Instagram page and follow us there. And thanks for watching.